the previous module we have stopped at a point where we have started sampling the continuous time signal x of t we have considered a random signal x of t and we said that in order to take samples out of this continuous time signal we need to have a train of impulses that is being indicated by p of t so we have this train of impulses where these impulses were placed at some fixed distance from each other so that distance the distance between two consecutive impulses was called as the sampling duration so we need to place the impulses at the point at which we need to retrieve or we need to preserve the sample so we said that if i have a signal x of t and if we need to sample the signal at certain points we need to place impulses at those points and we simply need to multiply this x of t with p of t and the resultant is what is going to be x p of t is the scaled version of these impulses and also we have obtained the time domain equation for this so if x p of t this x p of t was given by so let me write that again x p of t that is nothing but the multiplication of x of t with p of t so the original signal and the train of impulses is going to be equals to we have obtained this equation this is going to be x of and t del of t minus n t where this n is running from minus infinite to infinite this is x p of t now it's very interesting to look into the frequency domain perspective of this x p of t or the sample version of the signal we have assumed certain shape of the fourier transform of the original signal into consideration so we assume that if the original signal x of t is having the fourier domain representation something like this that is x of omega then let's try to find what is going to be the fourier representation of this sampled version of the signal so let's try to see what is that going to be now from the basic properties of the fourier transform we know that if two signals are getting multiplied in time domain then in fourier domain it is going to be the convolution of individual fourier transforms in this case we have the fourier roman representation of x of t and if somehow we are able to know the fourier transform of p of t then what we have to do is to simply convolve the fourier transform of x of t with the fourier transform of p of t and that's how we would obtain the fourier transform of x p of t just because x of t and p of t are getting multiplied in time in frequency domain they are going to be convolved with each other so let's try to see what is going to be the fourier representation of p of t we already know the fourier representation and we have assumed certain shape of certain arbitrary shape of this x of t the fourier transform of x of t that is going to be something like this let's assume that shape to be something like this and if we know that and if we know this fourier transform of p of t we can easily calculate the fourier transform x p of t by convolving the individual fourier transforms of x of t and p of t let's see how to do that so on the right what we have is the fourier transform of x of omega x of t that is x of omega now what we need to find is the fourier transform of p of t so let that be p of omega now in order to do that so we need to find the fourier transform of this p of t you can observe that this p of t is simply the train of impulses it is a kind of a periodic signal that repeats after a period of capital t that is the sampling duration so its fundamental period is capital t and we know from previous lectures that if we need to find the fourier transform of periodic signal 
first we need to know the fourier series coefficients of that periodic signal that means let me write that so we were at a point where we need to calculate the fourier transform of p of t so let me do that so i'm writing the fourier transform of p of t Let that be P of omega. So in order to calculate that first, we need to calculate calculate the Fourier series coefficients. We can't calculate the Fourier transform directly just because the signal is periodic in nature. So first we need to calculate the Fourier series coefficients of this P of T. So that is going to be a k. We know from the formula of Fourier series is going to be 1 upon the period. The period is capital T. Integration over a period t of the signal p of t e power minus j k omega naught t dt now you can see that this p of t over a period of t is nothing but an impulse you can see that this p of t over one period so let that period be say from minus t by 2 to t by 2 we are going to have only one impulse in one period you can see that from 0 to just before t it is going to be only one impulse that is present so within one time period there is going to be one impulse that is present so within one period capital t this p of t is going to be an impulse so this is going to be equals to 1 upon t integration over a period that is going to be del of t e power minus j k omega naught t dt and we know from the from the property of impulse function if any signal is getting multiplied with an impulse function it is going to give you the same impulse function being scaled by the value of the function being multiplied at t equals to 0 so this is going to be equals to 1 upon t integration over a period of capital t so i am taking the interval let's suppose from minus t by 2 to t by 2 you can take any such period it's going to be del of t e power now minus j k omega naught times 0 dt so that is going to be equals to 1 upon t integration over a period capital T capital T dt and we know from the definition of impulse function the integration of an impulse is going to be 1 so area under the impulse is going to be 1 so this is going to be 1 upon capital T therefore we know the Fourier series coefficients a k are going to be 1 upon T now if we know the Fourier series coefficients of this P of T we can easily calculate the Fourier transform so the next step is to calculate the Fourier transform now the Fourier transform can be calculated as follows what we need to do is to simply scale this a k by 2 pi so the Fourier transform P of omega 
is going to be the scaled version so we know from the previous lectures we know that if there is some periodic signal here it is p of t and we need to calculate the fourier transform first we need to calculate the fourier series coefficients now we have already obtained the fourier series coefficients that are a k's then we can calculate the fourier transform by simply multiplying a k by 2 pi and by the impulses that are being placed at integer multiple of the fundamental frequency and you can observe that here the fundamental period being capital t the fundamental frequency is going to be 2 pi by t so that is going to be omega omega naught or the fundamental frequency so p omega is going to be equals to 2 pi by capital t summation impulses that are being placed at fundamental frequency integer multiple of fundamental frequency so let that be omega naught or here you can see that this fundamental frequency omega naught is equals to 2 pi by capital T now this fundamental frequency we can indicate that with omega naught or we can say that just because this samples are located at the integer multiple of sampling duration we can say that it's a sampling frequency so this we can indicate by a different notation now so let that notation be omega s so I will try to represent this with another notation let it be omega s just because that is more indicative so this k is running from minus infinite to infinite now what is this this is simply the Fourier transform of p of t so we have got the Fourier transform of p of t and we already know what is the Fourier transform of the original signal x of t now we can simply convolve these two to obtain the Fourier transform of xp of t so let me emphasize this this is the Fourier transform of p of t or the train of impulses and we already know the Fourier transform of the impulse of the original signal the original signal is having Fourier transform something like this and now we have the Fourier transform of the train of impulses that is something like this and you can observe that the Fourier transform of train of impulses that are, that is p of t is going to be p of omega that is again train of impulses but those train of impulses are being scaled by a factor of 2 pi by capital T so the signal would look something like this so in the Fourier domain this p of t is going to be p of omega so I'll simply copy this I'll paste it here and this location of these impulses are now going to be you can see that this impulse is so let me draw this once again you can see that from this expression the, the p of omega is nothing but this impulses that are being placed at this locations the integer multiple of this fundamental frequency and that is also being scaled by 2 pi by capital T so I'll draw this as something like this so it's going to be an impulse that is being placed at the integer multiple of fundamental frequency something like this and each of these impulses are having the area of 2 pi by capital T so 
so the first impulse has zero the second impulse is at the fundamental frequency that is omega s two times omega s and so on so this is how the p of omega is going to be so this is the representation of p of omega that is the fourier domain representation of p of t so the train of impulses are going to be having the fourier transform of again the train of impulses but this train of impulses are going to be located at the integer integer multiple of the sampling frequency and the scaling factor of 2 pi by t there now as we are multiplying the signal in time domain that is x of t is being multiplied with p of t to obtain x p of t in fourier domain it is going to be the convolution of x of omega with p of omega why because we know from the basic property as i will write it here so x of t if it is getting multiplied with p of t from the property of fourier transform so the the fourier transform the continuous time fourier transform is going to be x of x of omega being convolved with p of omega and a scaling factor of 2 pi there so that is from the basic convolution property the the time multiplication property of the fourier transform so we have x of t we have p of t if we have multiplied that in time we have already observed how the waveform is going to be now in fourier domain it is going to be convolution of x of omega with p of omega with a scaling factor of 2 pi there so this signal x of omega is going to be convolved with each of with with this p of omega and this p of omega is the impulses being located at every integer multiple of omega s and we know what happens if we convolve any signal with an impulse if you convolve any signal with an impulse it is going to give you the same signal but that signal is going to be located at the location of the impulse what i mean by that is this signal x of omega after convolving with p of omega is going to be the same signal x of omega being replicated at all of these locations of these impulses so the resultant signal would look something like this so i'll simply copy this and i'll be having this original signal that is being located at the locations of these impulses so the first signal is located at zeroth instance zeroth frequency the second signal the second replica is going to be placed at omega s and so on can see what has happened here the original signal is getting replicated at this integer multiple of the fundamental frequency that is the sampling frequency omega s just because this p of omega is having the impulses the impulse sequence and any signal that is convolved with an impulse is going to give you the same signal at the location of the impulse 
that's what we have obtained here and this new signal is the Fourier domain representation of this XP of Omega so this is going to be XP of Omega of course this axis is this axis is Omega so my mistake here so the Fourier domain representation so this axis is going to be Omega and if you want to represent this in terms of the expression you can see that the P of Omega is something like this and the XP of Omega is going to be the convolution between X of Omega and P of Omega and of course with the scaling factor there so if you have this original signal that is getting convolved with this we are going to also have the scaling factor of 2 pi so the amplitude here is going to be 1 by t why because we know that this signal after getting convolved with this is going to be the same signal with the scaling factor of 2 pi by t and of course after convolving we have to scale it by 1 upon 2 pi so that 2 pi factor will get cancelled giving you 1 upon t at this amplitude so let me write the expression first so this p of omega after getting convolved with x of omega is going to be so we write that here that means x of omega x of omega that is being convolved with p of omega and we know what is the p of omega that is 2 pi by t summation k running from minus infinite to infinite del of omega minus k times omega s and of course the scaling factor there so this is going to be equals to we know what is the convolution this we can represent like this so we have this scaling factor 1 upon t summation k running from minus infinite to infinite capital X of omega minus k times omega s you can see from this expression that this the output the frequency domain representation of xp of t is going to be x of omega that is being replicated at every integer multiple of this sampling frequency so this is simply the Fourier domain representation of xp so that is capital xp of omega so this one here is capital xp of omega this is nothing but capital xp of omega and this is in the time domain that is xp of t so this is the representation that we have obtained for the Fourier domain representation of the sampling of continuous time signals so to conclude you can see that from this figure if we have a continuous time signal in order to sample that which must have a train of impulses and if you want to retain these samples at certain locations we must have those impulses being located at those locations and in order to obtain those samples we simply need to multiply x of t with the strain of impulses to obtain xp of t the resultant signal in time domain is going to be something like this it is going to be the scaled version of the same impulses the areas are going to be scaled and the scaling factor is x of nt in Fourier domain if certain signal that x of t is having the Fourier domain representation something like this it can be any of any shape I have just for simplicity purpose I have taken this shape and the 
from the Fourier transform of P of t, we know that the Fourier transform of P of t is going to be again the train of impulses. So in the Fourier domain, it is going to be the convolution of x of omega with P of omega, giving you this original signal, original Fourier domain representation, the, rep the Fourier domain representation of the original signal being replicated at every integer multiple of the sampling frequency that is omega s of course with a scaling factor of 1 by t same thing we have indicated with an expression here so the original Fourier domain representation is replicated at every integer multiple of omega s with a scaling factor of 1 by t so this is the the Fourier domain representation or frequency domain representation of sampling of continuous time signals we shall look more into this in the next module.